Libertarian journalist Steve Baker was arrested March 1st on charges relating to the January 6, 2021 riot at the U.S. Capitol. Baker claims that his arrest was based on, quote, scary words. Steve Baker is an investigative journalist known for his work with The Blaze and has written extensively about the trials of Capitol riot defendants and spoken in support of the event. He says his views on January 6 uh, are influencing what's happening to him now. Baker has supplied videos to Blaze News, the Glenn Beck-founded conservative news outlet. He also sold his videos to The New York Times and also to HBO Max. Now, on Friday, Baker was arrested by the FBI, accused of allegedly participating in the storming of the Capitol. He faces four misdemeanor charges that have been leveled against many other low-level January 6 defendants, including charges of trespassing and disorderly conduct. Now, he was released from the custody after making his initial appearance in a Dallas court. Baker took to X and said, I don't like the deliberate humiliation they put me through. There was no reason to do that. There was no reason to march me into a courtroom in leg chains today. Let's listen. I'm actually still shaking a little bit. I, I don't like what I just went through. I don't like the deliberate humiliation that they put me through. There was no reason to do that. There was no reason to march me uh, into a courtroom in leg chains today. Um, there was somebody there answering for a felony and they weren't in chains. My charges are misdemeanors. It's just, uh, it's, it's mind boggling. But that is, uh, unfortunately the type of selective persecution that January 6 defendants are facing and ultimately what we are looking at here and probably the only reason that many of the January 6 defendants have had to go through what they've had to go through is because of what I've talked about so many times and what I've written about so many times it's called scary words Robert F. Kennedy Jr. reacted on X about the arrest, saying, quote, the suppression of free speech through intimidation and arrest goes directly against what our founding fathers intended. The Twitter files, Missouri v. Biden, Kennedy v. Biden, reveal a full-scale war by the U.S. government on the First Amendment. Hmm. According to an FBI affidavit, Baker antagonized police officers who tried to keep him on the other side of a door jam, repeatedly asking, are you going to use that gun on us? He remained inside the building for approximately 37 minutes before police let him out of the Capitol. In one video, as Baker approached the Capitol around 1.10 p.m. on January 6th, near a location where gallows had been constructed, Baker recorded himself saying, look out your windows, B-I-T-C-H's, look at what's coming. Yeah. All right, so this seems to be a really important story, a big story, uh, a polarizing story, particularly in right media, where this is emblematic of what they believe to be political uh, prosecutions of people who were largely articulating their free speech rights. In this instance, it seems to be a little messy, help me if I'm understanding, because Baker did enter yes, uh, the Capitol and there seems to be an argument there for trespass, um, but is the argument that the kind of um, the, the other charges, the idea that he was belligerent with the police that people believe that that's trumped up and retribution for the fact that he's been doing so much coverage of other January 6 defendants? Yeah, basically that. Look, there's no argument he did enter the Capitol. So if you're just charging literally every single person with trespassing for going in, I, I mean, the fact that he's a journalist, he, and he is a journalist, he's contributed video footage for Blaze Media. Other outlets have, have used, used his footage. Now, should journalists be treated separately because they say they're journalists? I actually don't really take that position. So if you're just going to absolutely charge every single person who did enter that building, uh, you know, he wasn't, he didn't break down the windows. He didn't, you know, what didn't, did not, is not, and it, this is the important thing, is not being accused of like scuffling physically with cops. The affidavit, and this is even according to the, and I did read through it, but this is the NBC News write-up of the affidavit says, indicates that federal prosecutors will focus on comments from Baker showing he was sympathetic to the mob and then the way the words he used with the with the police and then in other places saying and 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 by the way he says his comments so he made a lot of comments about Nancy Pelosi being the b word he says those were taken out of comments because then he turned around and said, and Mitch McConnell's a, the other B word. And like he's a, he's a libertarian and he doesn't hold well, a lot of sure. respect for our, for our officials. I mean, I took from that not that we're supposed to be mad at him for yeah. using colorful language with respect to a Democrat versus a Republican. It seems to me the implication was that because he was near gallows, I guess the... Um, the, the, the structure that had been erected ostensibly for Mike Pence to be 
guillotined or, or hung or, or what have you, that there was an applied threat in some of what he was saying. That That's how I read it, regardless of with you, whether you agree with it. Yeah. Um, and then there's also the aspect of this that we're, of course, now many years beyond January 6th. And obviously there's no evidence of this. Maybe they're just taking their time to get around to him. But he has been covering a lot of these trials. He's been in court. Um, again, he's been among the like the press gaggle of people who are there at these events reporting on them. And, um, you know, from a sympathetic conservative media position. So the suggestion is that he's being that these charges are coming now mm -hmm. as a kind of punishment for that. Again, there's no hard evidence of that, but I see why it's being raised. And look, it is a, you know, it is a it, it, it is a, f a free speech issue. I mean, we to some degree, we want to know, right, what went on in the Capitol, even e even in order to condemn it and hold people who deserve to be held accountable accountable. Other other news media outlets have used his footage, have interviewed him. Um, yes, but I, I don't know. Th I, this I, is a different question, though. I mean. One can believe he's doing journalism. One can also believe that he committed trespass sure. and otherwise violated the law in service of said journalism. Does that mean that we say he shouldn't be subject to the same kinds of uh, prosecution that the 900 plus others who stormed the Capitol and were charged were subject to? Or do we have a kind of a civil disobedience mindset about this that says, you do the sit-in, you violate the law, you go to jail, you serve your time, a la Martin Luther King, and we don't consider that to be political prosecution. That's the cost of doing business, and in his case, the cost of doing journalism. Yeah, and again, on the trespassing part, I think it's just, it's very clear he did commit that, so I, I don't know, you know, people can be unhappy about it, but I don't, it, he literally did do that. Sure. Um, it seems to me that one can make a case, the disorderly contact, that, that you know, the, the 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 words he used to describe what was going on and he felt about it, including at the police officers, is being rounded up to disorderly conduct yeah. in a punitive way. Yeah, and I'm generally not uh, wild about that particular <laughs> kind of charge. I mean, because you can yeah. see how broad, easy it is to apply, apply. The police officer feels disrespected. They don't like the kinds of things that are being shouted at them by protesters. And so you can stick them with a charge like this, which does come very close to violating someone's ability to have the right just free speech and say what they want to say, including antagonizing a cop in any way, shape, or form. Now, I, I do think it's it's interesting for people on this part of the political spectrum to be taking this position when a few years ago during the 2020 riots, the idea that anybody might say something like ACAB, which stands for all cops are bastards, or calling yeah. people pig and things like that, were used to characterize the protests as awful um, and something that needed to be put down, not just by cops, but in the framing of Tom Cotton sitting in the National Guard in. Um, but I'm not going to look to get gift horse in the mouth. I think at the end of the day, people should be skeptical of the charges that are easily applied overly broadly and can be used to target individuals who have gone against whatever right. political power happens to be uh, in charge at, the, at a given time. And, and of course, Baker himself self-describes as a libertarian, um, uh, one of, you know, one of my ilk who, who I, I, again, I don't know how consistent his libertarianism is or yeah. what past things he said about the police, but yes, I strongly believe people have the right to protest nonviolently to make negative statements about police and, and, and not be, of course they have, they have a First Amendment right, everyone should have that right. And so no one, whether it's a, whether it's a conservative rally or, a, or an anti-police misconduct rally or whatever it is, everyone should enjoy that right to criticize even using colorful or impolite language, um, the, the police, that's an important libertarian value. So, um, so, so that, yes, I, so I, I think there's a lot of reason to be concerned about what's going on here and it, it merits further um, further investigation um, because we don't want to criminalize people for just you know make crossing crossing the police in this way and do we know anything about the delayed timing it does seem to me that that is the most yeah. questionable I mean if there has been the case that uh, apparently about 2,000 people entered the Capitol 935 defendants have been charged with entering or remaining in a restricted federal building or grounds in the in the 30 months since January 6th. If it is the case that they've been like rolling out these charges, then it might not be so suspicious that they're just mm -hmm. now getting around to Baker. But if it seems like these have been largely buttoned up and these charges have emerged as he has 
emerged himself as a significant figure in reporting on this story in a way that is sympathetic to the protesters, I do think that, that gives them more cause it, for skepticism. Yes, and it's decidedly not the case that they like just obtained the footage or something of him. It, in this affidavit, it says they have they were able to identify him as having been in the Capitol on February 10th of 2021, mm. which is a month after it happened. So that's not an excuse they could they could use. Um, I'm sure we'll continue covering this. It's an issue that has um, attracted a lot of attention from. Uh, conservatives, but also just, you know, kind of the, the pro-free yeah. speech group that you and I tend to lump ourselves in with as well. So we will have more reporting on that to come, more rising right after this.